Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear, and today we're going to take a look at the new version of the Jetbeam RRT3. This is the version with the triple XML LEDs instead of that single SST50 that was in the other RRT3. So it's going to be more of a floody beam, smaller reflectors, and uh, you'll get a better idea of that when we take both of them outside. So stuff you get on the inside, you got some spare parts, here's some spare O-rings, spare tail cover cap if you want to use that if you happen to wear out the old one. Although I've never managed to do that. <laughs> you do have one here if you need it though. Uh, warranty information, instructions. Instructions are always good to read. Here is the light itself. I'll show you. There's those three XML LEDs. You can see smooth reflectors for each one of them. Produces a really interesting beam. And again, you'll see that better when we go outside. But uh, physically, pretty much the same as the existing RRT3. So this is the one with that single SSD50 LED and a single reflector. Exterior of them is going to be pretty much the same except for some marking differences between them. But uh, obviously the LEDs are going to be vastly different between the two. So there's the light. I'll show you the silica gel packet that they absolutely love to include with their stuff lately. There's going to be another one inside the light. But uh, I'll show you the light in a little bit better detail. We'll zoom in on it. Just so you can see it and everything. And this one, you know, I don't know future versions they're going to change this, but it says the 1200 lumens and then it says turbo 1950 up here. So I don't know if they had some old bodies left left over or something, but uh, they do see, see 12, say 1200 lumens, or at least this first batch does, so just be aware of that. Uh, there's the switch on the back. You got that forward momentary switch. And then this ring right here is how you adjust the modes. And again, there's the three Cree XML LEDs, each with their own reflector. Produces a really interesting beam. So we're going to go and take off the back, pull out the battery carrier, show you that a little bit better. Lots of threads. All right. Like I said, another silica gel packet. Jetbeam's been going crazy with those lately, so you'll find at least two inside every light you get. Uh, so here's the battery carrier, really nice sturdy uh, construction. Lots of metal on here, so really nice and sturdy. And this light will take either three 18650s or six CR123s. And right now, they're doing a special where you can get the batteries for free. They may not always be doing that, so if you're watching this in the future, I apologize if they're not doing that. But uh, for right now, they are including three of their own Jetbeam 18650s with each of the, uh, the ones you purchase. So the battery carrier is kind of nice. If you actually look at it, it has the same contacts on both sides doesn't matter how you insert it. So you can insert it either way and it will work. You don't have to worry about reverse polarity. You do have to worry about it in the battery carrier. Of course, the negative end goes on the spring for each one of those. So I'll slide that back in there. Put the cap back on. I'll show you how this light works. A lot of people ask what this port right here is for. It is not for charging. Uh, they may have something like that in the future, but this is actually for a pressure switch. So a remote pressure switch. Um, this light is made to be weapon mountable, even though it is pretty big and heavy. Um, it can handle it. Uh, but that's what this is for. It's got a remote pressure switch that plugs into there. That is not for charging. This is the switch. So we're going to go and turn it all the way to the left. And if you lightly press it, you can see you get momentary activation for it. And then for constant on, click it all the way and you have constant on. So you have this ring here that lets you switch between the modes. You can see the lowest mode on here is really, really low, which is kind of unusual for a light this size and output. Uh, it's kind of nice. So, I mean, if you want to get the extended battery life or you're doing up close kind of stuff where you don't want a huge amount of output, you do have that really low output if you need it. But then you just turn the ring and it'll start cranking through the different brightnesses. And even you can see the lower ones of these are going to completely wash out my camera <laughs> because 1950 lumens is quite a lot of light. And then all the way to the right, you have your strobe. So same operation that you had with the original RRT3. You just have those three XMLs for more output. And uh, you'll see better how the beams perform when we go outside. So we're going to go and take both of these outside and uh, show you how they perform side by side. All right, here are the two RRT3s. Got the big 4D mag light that everybody knows. Try the mag light out first. Bush 15 feet, tree out there at 100 feet. Zoom in on that. All right, let's try out these RRT3s, see how they do. First off, we're going to do the existing one, which is that one with that single SST50. And uh, 
this is on the max output. You can see a ton of concentrated light coming out of this. So we'll zoom in on that tree. Even at 100 feet, that may be a little bit too much light. <laughs> There's a lot of light coming out of this guy. Everything in, around it is lit up really, really well. So basically my whole backyard is lit up. Pretty cool. Um, again, this is only 100 feet. It can go much, much further than this. We'll drop it down to the different outputs. You can see even on the lower outputs, except for the lowest, 100 feet, absolutely no problem. We'll crank it back up. All right, let's try out the triple XML version. Let me go ahead and crank it up to high. All right, there is the triple XML version. So this pretty well illustrates the difference in the beams. I mean, this one, you saw a really concentrated one on the SST-50. This one is just really nice transition from a really bright hot spot to still pretty bright everything else as well. So great beam on this one. Lights up everything in front of you really, really well. Super, super bright light. And uh, not just the hot spot is bright, but pretty much the entire beam is bright. So we'll go ahead and crank down to the different outputs. There you can see a little bit better idea of the concentration. But uh, on high, it's nice to see the transition that you get from the hot spot to the spill. A nice gradual transition. So that's 100 feet. Let's zoom in on that actually. So you can see how washed out it is. <laughs> A little too much light at that kind of distance. Let's try a longer distance to see how it does. All right, we have more distance to work with now. Got the two RRT3s, 40 mag light. Let's try out the mag light first. Tree, or that's my uh, house at 50 yards. Tree in the front yard at 100 yards. Doesn't really make it out to the tree. So let's try out the two RRT3s. First off, we're gonna do the existing one, the one with the SST50. There you go. Concentrated light, 100 yards away. Absolutely no problem. I accidentally switched it in this rogue, <laughs> but you can see really concentrated hot spot on that one. Great for distances, does really well at distances, but uh, the spill is not going to be as bright as you see with the triple XML version. So there's the SST50 version. Let's try out the triple XML. There you go. You still get that nice concentrated hot spot. Great output on the hot spot, but uh, a little bit better transition to the spill. So you get brighter spill, lights up a wider area at once. So if you're just trying to illuminate a distant target and that's it, definitely not the light for that. <laughs> and as you can tell, you saw that the tree in the front yard was dying in previous videos. I thought it was just dry. It is officially dead. It's going to be cut down. So I'm going to have to find a new tree to light up in my front yard. I'll have to try a new angle. But uh, there you go. So that is the Jetbeam RRT3 with the three XML LEDs. If you like it, you can get it from us at goinggear.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us in the comments or at goinggear.com. And I forgot to do them side by side. So before I go, let's do them side by side. <laughs> so there you go. It gives you a better idea of the difference in the beams. There's the SST51 on the left and then the triple XML on the right. So you can get an idea of the difference in the concentration and everything. But definitely a lot more output on the triple XML. Okay, done for real now. <laughs>